Alright, we're back. So, last time we reached Vermilion City. And now that we're here, we've got this ticket, so I mean, I guess we might as well go down over here and uh, talk to this guy, because the SS Ant's here, so you know, we can get on board. Go uh, have a nice party with the people on this luxury cruise. I'm not getting changed for this trip at all. All these rich snobs can just uh, accept that I'm going to wear my casual clothes to this event. Also, there's your proof that we're using a legitimate copy of this game. Do you know about the copy protection thing? I do not. Uh, if you're playing, if if the game detects that you're using a, a not official copy, that character says, "By the way, if you like this game, buy it or die." <laughs> My God, I can't believe they made a creepy pasta. <laughs> I love uh, copy protection that just destroys your day instead of like preventing you from playing at all. Mm -hmm. My favorite being the Earthbound one that just multiplies the uh, number of on-screen enemies by like five. Yep. <laughs> and then at the very last second it crashes and deletes your save. And then even Mother 1 has one of those where you go to the concerts section and then it's just, nah. <laughs> now you're done. Spyro 3 also has a good one. Uh, because it just slowly makes the game glitch out more and more. To the point where, like, eventually you just, every door can take you to a different world, potentially. <laughs> Every time you try to travel between worlds, it just loads up a random place for you to travel to. Alright, so here we have a fisherman. So, both of these trainer types tend to have water type Pokemon. Tentacle here is water poison, though, so no double kick for me. That's not going to help at all. Now, I forget, did we get anything important at level 16? No, nope, apparently not. I feel like 16's a good level for certain Pokemon, but not Gato. Didn't get anything special here. Now, I don't think we've seen the move Rapid Spin before. It's not going to do Star you any good here, but uh, it will remove certain obstacles. Uh, God, I don't even know what Pokémon would have anything like that at this point, but there are certain uh, attacks that leave behind like rocks or barbs or something like that that does damage if you try to leave. And Rapid Spin can get rid of those. It doesn't do much in the way of damage, though. Recover, on the other hand, is Staryu's far worse move, because it just heals. Just heals ya. No real drawback to it, other than, you know, kind of wastes a turn-ish. It's like a potion, but without the uh, use of PP, so, you know, I wouldn't even call it a waste, really. And his last Pokémon's a shelter. Gonna gonna kick this clam. Yeah, that'll that'll learn ya. Oh, icicle spear. Probably one of the worst multi-hit attacks, cause the animation's just so slow. At the very least, though, it is an ice type move, so it has that going for it. If anything were weak to ice in the Pokemon series, it's effective against it. Both typings that are weak to ice. Actually, to be fair, I, I insult the ice type moves, but you know what? They are actually pretty useful in certain situations. I think there's three types that are weak to ice. Yeah, dragon, grass, and, um, oh shoot, what's the last ground. one? Is it ground? Yeah. yeah, ground. I remember the Awkward Zombie comic. You know when water seeps in the ground and then freezes and it causes cracks? Have you ever tried to punch a bird? That's the actual punchline. That's the one everyone remembers. Yep. Anyway, Gato is evolving. Yay! 
So, uh, when a Nidoran evolves, uh, they will actually split in what their names are, because of course you have Nidoran male and female. However, the male Nidoran turns into Nidorino, Nidoran female will evolve into Nidorina. And so there's that. So, you can actually now evolve a Nidorina at any time. I'm not going to just yet because there's a move I want, but trust me, when the time comes, I will definitely be evolving at Arena. And it won't be too long before that happens either. I don't really need a move that's uh, that far down the uh, levels for Nid Arena. Uh, that being said, though, uh, one thing about Pokemon moves for uh, Pokemon that evolve using items. Uh, of course, it takes Pokémon longer to learn moves if you evolve them. That's sort of the uh, trade-off for the uh, better evolutions having better stats. However, typically if you upgrade or uh, evolve a Pokémon with an item, such as a Moonstone or a Firestone or something like that, they usually won't learn many, if any, of their own moves. So, evolve at your own risk if you're doing that. I think for the Kanto Pokemon, uh, if they evolve with a stone, they don't learn any more moves. Unless they're Eevee. Paris is one of the few Pokemon that can have a uh, times 5 vulnerability. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. Nope. Anyone so much as lights a match in the same room as Paris, it's dead. It just instantly goes up in flames. Good to know. Paris's only weakness is fire. Keep away from fire. And the virus is unstoppable. So yeah, by the way, of course, if you didn't notice back there, there's a healing room on the ship, and... Oh, no. Mm. Don't like this dialogue. Go away, Dylan. This guy really likes horsies, huh? Just, we found the big horsey fan. The horsey stan has logged on. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't remind me of one of the other weirder parts of Let's Go, is it's a lot harder to get water types because they remove fishing. Yeah. And honestly, Let's Go seems like prime for fishing. You would think. Like, just add a fishing minigame. I honestly don't think it makes too much sense that you have to fight a Pokemon you catch on a fishing pole. It's like, <laughs> why fish then? You just pull it out of the water and start punching it. Get in the ball, you nerd. <laughs> Let's go kind of fixes that, but it just wouldn't. It could fix that, it just doesn't. Alright, and we got an Aether. Yay. Well, goodbye. Uh, thank you for just randomly ambushing me. I would have attacked you anyway, but there we go. You made things easier for me. Also, this, this sailor is staking his pride on fighting a child. Okay. Don't know what's going on in your life, Duncan. Oh no. Here we go, horsey. <laughs> Round two. So you did to my brother Dylan. Uh, I think we already mentioned the um, purchased Magikarp is a lot more useful on Let's Go because you can get you can't get Magikarp until way later in Let's Go. So if you want a Gyarados... Yeah, that's a really weird design decision. <laughs> it's weird, but it also makes that purchased Magikarp so much more useful that I think it, it's kind of a wash, actually. Finally, the Magikarp salesman who probably works for Team Rocket or something, finally, he gets his chance. Yeah, the fishing guru who gave me a rod that wasn't that good can catch precisely one Pokemon, which is really weird. It's magic. No, I I don't know what they. I didn't know that was a phrase. <laughs> All right, Leonard's got one really good shelter. So one thing I should mention is uh. Are you familiar at all with Game Freak's game, Pulseman? No. 
I watched it once, and I don't really remember much of it at all, but uh, the name SSN is actually derived from that game. Uh, there is a computer computer called the Saint Anu, so it's based off of that, which is a neat little reference. And it is also really weird to think about Game Freak making something for the Mega Drive. I was going to say, I don't think I was aware Game Freak had other games. <laughs> you hear about them every once in a while, like, um... Harmonite, I think, is one of theirs? And they've got another one that I remember hearing about, like, some point semi-recently, but... Yeah, they are well-known for things outside of Pokémon. Alright, and that's Leonard in his very good shelter. Now, what is it about sailors and battling? I need to know. No, d you can't just bring up a phrase I don't know and not explain it. <laughs> oh shoot, did I miss the sailor who basically threatens to murder you? That must have been the first sailor we met. Because that guy's kind of screwed up. <laughs> I think he threatens to make you walk the plank if you lose, which is a wild thing to say to a child. <laughs> Hey kid, I know you like fighting with your animals, but I will actually Shanghai you if you lose this one. Alright. Ah, oh, cool. Well, uh, thanks for fighting me then. I know I just barged into your room unannounced, Thomas. Oh, hey, you got a Growlithe. Oh, now I feel really bad about this. I like Growlithe. Rallus also got Intimidate, and that's going to cut my attack, but that doesn't matter. Turtle Misu, start spitting. I see why they changed it to a stream in most other games. <laughs> it's far, less, far more impressive. And he's got a second Growlithe, so at the very least, Tom Thomas does have good taste. I, I probably can't call him Tom. I don't think he... Likes me for just breaking into his room. And also critting his second Growlithe? I, I really loogied that one pretty hard. Just... Patoo, patoo, patoo. <gasps> my dogs, how dare you! You made my friends wet, how dare you? You spit on my friends, don't... If somebody's a friend to anyone else, don't be mean to them, ever. So that second room there, I'm of course skipping because we've been there. It's the heal room. So here's another guy who immediately attacks you. I just keep barging in on all these gentlemen who for some reason don't want me breaking into their rooms. And I'm down. Alright, so we're already getting pretty good stat ups. And we get Poison Sting, so we can finally consciously poison something. We don't have to rely on Poison Point anymore. Poison Sting, of course, isn't a very good poison move, but, you know, it's something. Unfortunately, Gen 1 and, by proxy, Gen 3 are pretty bad about their poison-type moves. It's going to be a while till we get a good, reliable, very dangerous, like, poisoning attack. And it's actually not going to be for even longer than that before we get, like, a very damaging poison move. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't introduced Venoshock yet, which is one of my favorite poison-type attacks. Just, hey, did you do that thing that poison-types do where you poison the Pokémon? Okay, cool. What if we made this attack hurt more when that happens? Alright, jeez. People in their privacy, god. I sympathize with you completely, but mm, whatever, nerd. Nope. <laughs> 
You're not getting the cherry pie. You asked the wrong person. <laughs> You're not even from Kalos, are you? I swear these rich types just pretending to be from Kalos with their Kalos accents. We might have to save this conversation if there's another long trainer fight coming up, but have you ever been uh, mistaken for an employee at some place? Um, okay, this is a short story, but a weird one. Uh, yes, but at a place I did work for? Ah. Except I was only just getting in for the day, so I didn't have, like, a uniform on or anything. <laughs> so I was just... You know, I, They were like, oh, wait, you don't work here. And I didn't correct them, and I did just go on <laughs> to, to work. Because, I mean, I haven't clocked in yet. I'm not getting paid to help you. They just come by, see you in your uniform later, and just stop. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. It was me all along. <laughs> uh, my family took a vacation to, I think this was Florida, and we went to Universal Studios down there. And uh, I got asked by some like random person like how to find the restroom, and I told them like, well, I don't really know, but uh, I knew my parents just got the restroom. So I was like, just just follow them; they'll find a restroom eventually. <laughs> And, uh, she got mad at me and said, like, how do you not know where the restroom is if you work here? And her <laughs> partner... That's where you're wrong. Her partner or whatever was like, he doesn't work here. What? <laughs> I didn't even really correct her. I just left after that. <laughs> I mean, there's a lady, like, a few doors down that'll hear heal your Pokemon just fine. I'm not taking responsibility for this. Anyway, I'm gonna beat up your brother's Pokemon too. Oh, he loves Pokemon. I'm gonna be a huge jerk then. <laughs> Man. I'm usually not you know, down for the whole, oh man, what if Pokemon but fucked up sort of thing, but you know what? Sometimes you just have to acknowledge that you are still a huge bully. No matter how much disbelief you suspend, you are still kind of a jerk. <laughs> I'm taking my much larger version of this Pokemon you have and just digging holes through the ship to beat up your Pokemon. I do have to question why so many children are running around with these poisoned rabbits. <laughs> I mean, you catch it, it's fair game. Do you think uh, poison works on humans in the Pokemon world? I mean, probably. I'm pretty sure there's probably some Pokedex entry that does actually say, like, oh, a lot of trainers get poisoned on this Pokemon. This Pokemon just looks at you funny, and suddenly you can't feel your blood anymore. Also, yeah, I just randomly decided that I wanted to add Water Pulse, because uh, I hadn't done that yet, and I figured now's as good a time as any. So, uh, yeah, Water Pulse might confuse the foe, and it's also 20 uh, points more powerful than Water Gun, and also the animation is way better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Water Pulse. A really cool move. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, since it's a TM, uh, and that's not going to be a permanent move, we'll have to say goodbye to it eventually, but for a little while at least, uh, we'll be able to use it. It's actually going to get a fair bit of mileage. Uh, I also realized that you can't give Brick Break to Nidorina, so we're going to have to wait a little while longer to actually give that to her. Oh, you're Global Police. Okay, um, geez, I didn't know they brought Sentai in to fight the, uh, Team Rocket. <laughs> well, I won't interrupt his work. Team Rocket's been infiltrated by the Ganglars. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so here's the kitchen. Uh, you won't find any trainers here, but you'll find a great ball for some reason. And as this man says, there's a berry in the trash, and there are a whole lot of trash cans, so... Uh, you're, you're not from Kalos. I know you're not from Kalos, you're just faking that accent. 
But anyway, yeah, garbage cans. Let's let's pick out some berries. Oh, a berry covered in onions? Sure, yeah, I'll take this very smelly chesto berry. Hey, you're not the one eating it. <laughs> what do you have to complain about? I'm sure my Pokemon love the smell of onions. Perry probably downs onions on a da daily basis. <laughs> Alright, so, now we get to move on to the second floor. We're part way through. We can also go to the deck, which is over in this direction. Also, the captain's a sword master. Jeez. <laughs> he has high critical hit rates. Our captain wields the Wodao. He is unstoppable. Don't mess with him. I forgot that's what cut was supposed to be. <laughs> when you get the move cut, you just give your Pokemon a sword. So, uh, I guess now's a good time as any to mention, um, the SSN is also important in one of the most, um, well-known, uh, playground rumors. Pretty much in any game, if not just Pokemon. So there's actually a separate area that we can't access that's close to the outside of the SSN. Uh, basically, just the uh, scene before you board the SSN. Uh, there's a landmass. However, we can't reach said landmass without the move Surf and the ability to use it. Now, for reasons, normally that would be impossible, but there are ways to go about that. Uh, however, on that landmass is a truck. You've probably heard this one before, but people thought that, you know, there was something special about that truck, and that if you used strength on the truck, then you could find the legendary Pokemon Mew. That's not true at all. You, you couldn't. Nope. Now, there is one thing about uh, the truck. Uh, you can find an item underneath it in this game. It's not anything to do with Mew. It's an item called a lava cookie. But yeah, they I guess they just uh, put that there to be cute. Mm -hmm. I think it's super messed up that the way you can actually get Mew in Gen 1 sounds so much less believable. <laughs> you know, I don't actually remember how you get Mew proper. You have to catch an Abra, get an encounter with a Pokemon trainer, it teleport after the exclamation point pops up, but before he can get to you, and then you walk around a bit and you'll randomly encounter a Pokemon, and depending on which Pokemon you fought earlier, it'll be a Mew. God, yeah, that sounds so fake. What the heck? <laughs> you get missing no first, right? <laughs> You gotta battle him. Uh, I'll have to reread the Pokemon Blue Let's Play. That goes into detail on all these glitches. It's less a Let's Play and more just a glitch showcase. Okay, yeah. I don't even think the person gets all the badges. I think they just show off all the glitches and call it a day. Mm hmm. Yeah, cuz Mew's actually just a uh, event Pokemon normally. Which means you basically just had to rely on Nintendo saying, Hey, you can find this Pokemon at these locations. Just go there and uh, download it. Well, not download. Back in the day it was uh, trading with the wires. But nowadays it is actually so much better. Yeah. Nowadays there's just an option on the menu. And you'll read on Twitter, Hey, doing an event. You just download a thing. And it's good. Oh, you have to shell out $50 for a worse Switch controller. Yeah, that's also bad. <laughs> One of the commentators on this Let's Play did that. <laughs> it's probably the one who actually owns Pokemon Let's Go. <laughs> I'll give you a hit! It's the one of us who knows what happens in Pokemon Let's Go. I did not buy a $50 Pokeball for a game I don't own. 
<laughs> Admittedly, I would like a Pokeball, but I'm not that desperate. See, I feel like if it was $30, I wouldn't be too upset. It actually is really fun to use, and use nice, but... I could've got, like... Actually, do you know that, um... I don't know if it's any. I don't know if it's still the newest Toys to Life game, but that Toys to Life game, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Uh, that's the one with Star Fox, right? Yeah. Right now on Amazon, the uh, starter pack for the Switch, which contains like the game, an R wing, uh, a pilot. I think it's Fox is the pilot, and two weapons is thirty dollars. Wow, that's pretty good. I could get that, and I think a copy of Hey Pikmin, which I'm also thinking about getting. <laughs> instead of this goddamn Pokeball that I have not used in months because I stopped playing Let's Go. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, it is nice to have a Pokeball. Yeah, I never got toy Pokeballs when I was a kid, actually. Yeah, like, I think Burger King was the one that had toy Pokemon? I think. Because I remember getting a Geodude. I forget if I told the story in the one of the earlier parts, but I got a Geodude from that, except at the time I didn't really know what Pokemon was, so I wasn't really interested. So that toy eventually disappeared, and to be honest, I regret not still having a cheap piece of plastic from Burger King, because in fairness, it would have been nice. So anyway, yeah, uh, Geodude's kind of just like one of the first Pokemon I've ever really acknowledged. Because I don't think I really paid much attention to Pokemon until, like, Gen 4. It's one of those things where, like, I knew it existed. I saw advertisements for it, but that was, the, like, the first time I was like, oh, that's Pokemon. Uh, I I got in on the ground floor of Pokemon. Uh, so you might not know the toys that I had. I had, like, oh, I forget what their actual name for it is. Like, Pokemon House toys? Mm -hmm. They were basically like Polly Pockets, but with Pokemon. Oh, neat. They were little, they looked like little um, makeup cases, but no one told me that when I was a kid. Uh, but they'd open up to little, like, be little play sets. And I think some of them came with bridges so you could connect multiple ones. Oh, neat. I'll have to show you what they look like after this, after the video. Oh, Shiitake got Leech Life to uh, interrupt real quick. Uh, Leech Life isn't that good a move, but it is a bug-type move, so, you know, not not half bad. It also drains life. So, uh, yeah, now Shiitake is officially horrifying, because it's this horrible bug with mushrooms growing out of it that will just latch onto a Pokémon, poison it, and then just start eating. And eating. And eating. And speaking of eating, apparently this man just steals people's youth, so I would prefer <laughs> not to battle him. Oh no, it's Heyu's brother. He's upset that she vanished. I'm looking for my sister. It's me, Pikachu. This is my voice. This is what I sound like. Pikachu. <laughs> oh no, I've still been killed. Avenge me, sister. Oh god, I would watch Detective Pikachu if uh, Pikachu was played by Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> or Kevin Michael Richardson, one of those voices. Oh, oh god, he's still got her youth, no! <laughs> oh god, he just absorbs it from a distance. Ugh. Just take the Stardust and go. Stardust is one of those items that you can sell for good money and it has no other use. You just look closely on your character's hair, and there's a single gray hair. Uh, uh, uh. Let's get away from this room, I hate it. You don't drain my youth, do you? Good. You don't even fight, it's fine. I'm fine with that. So yeah, cuts an HM move, meaning it's hard to discard, and also it's really not a very good move in battle, so get another uh, move to you or get another Pokemon to use it for ya. Also, I was absolutely in... I, I mean, I wasn't at the party, but I got a ticket. Also, I'm pretty sure by now we've passed all of the NPCs that say like, oh yeah, the party's already over, but uh, yeah, the party's already over, so thanks, Bill. Now we're just awkwardly walking around a boat. Hey, I, I have this ticket, but I'm late. They want to fight my 
monkey that's just mad all the time. It's just a ball of fuzz that's mad all the time, but it's kind of monkey-esque. You know what? I'm glad Pikachu's popular now because we got to take that away from the rich. Take that, fantasy rich. Alright, and we got an X attack. I'll sell that later. <laughs> I was going to say, that's definitely getting used. People who are better than me at Pokemon could probably find a use for that, but you know what? I don't really need it. Ah, trick question. Strong rare Pokemon are the best. I've solved your riddle, Gentleman Lamar. I think they're supposed to have, like, a lot of pet-like Pokemon. And Growlithe is just an incredibly pet-like Pokemon. <laughs> I love that animation so much! Oh, I'm getting out of here! Eh, uh, figures the uh, paralyzed Pokemon would get dragged out. That's the real problem with the move roar, is that, like, you know, in trainer battles at least, uh, it makes you, f or it forces you to uh, switch Pokemon, meaning experience will be split, which kind of sucks. Yeah. In the wild, it's a nightmare, though, because if a wild Pokemon uses roar, that's it. <laughs> the battle's over. Fuck you. You don't get that Pokemon. Uh, gentlemen also seem to be fond of fire types. Which I guess somebody had to be because Gen 1 and 3 didn't really have like fire specific trainers as much. There's definitely like f Oh shoot, what are the names of the uh fire Flame flamethrowers? Fire eaters? Flame something like that, yeah. There are definitely a lot of them in Gen 4, I know. Probably Gen 2 as well in that case. But they didn't really get brought over to uh, Fire Red Leaf Green. Oh, dang. You solved your own riddle before I solved it. Curse you, Lamar. Outfoxed again. Well, you know what, kid? You're, you and your dad are wrong. Uh, it'll be a while before we see Safari Zone, but I'm not big on it, but again, it's the story for a, another day. Alright, and since these two people are trainers, or trainers we can fight at least, we definitely want to go and heal before we go down this way, because look who it is. Oh, Hideki just thinks he's from Kalos now, ooh. Catch a bunch of Pokemon and I think I'm hot shit. Ugh. It's really weird that Pokemon has a France equivalent now. Because back when this game was first written, it was just France. Yep. <laughs> it's really weird that they have real-world equivalents. We'll see more of that later, but yeah. So uh, Hideki here has a uh, new sprite. He doesn't, however, have too much of a difference in his team. Uh, he's still got his bird, he's still got his rat. Uh, he's got a surprise, but he also has his starter. The surprise is going to be a little bit unpleasant if you uh, laughed at his uh, Abra before. But he's not going to use that just yet. Uh, he's going to use his Ibisaur in my case. Ivysaur, of course, is still pretty nasty, because Ivysaur's got Poison Powder and Leech Seed. Uh, did it... did he use Leech Seed in the first battle, uh, where he was an Ivysaur? I forget. I don't think he did. I know he got hit with a Leech Seed somewhere. But yeah, Leech Seed drains your health, in case we didn't see it, uh... And it's not, like, an official status effect, so he can actually proc either Poison Powder or Sleep Powder. Which means you'll either be asleep and be unable to attack him back, and also he'll drain you of your health with Leech Seed, or you'll be poisoned, and oh! <laughs> <laughs> or you'll be poisoned, and then you'll lo lose even more health from Leech Seed. So, uh, yeah, Ivysaur, still pretty dangerous. Anyway, uh, good job, Spearmint, you, you did well. But, uh, Raticate's up next, so let's, uh, switch out! Let's switch to Perry, because <laughs> Perry's good at this sort of thing.
Alright, so of course, as I mentioned with the last Raticate, uh, expect Hyper Fang whenever you see one, and of course this is no exception, because of course the very powerful Raticate would have that. That's gonna hurt a lot, that's gonna hurt a lot, however, I am going to kick this Raticate off the ship. Goodbye! <laughs> I imagine that exchange looked like uh, Kenshiro fighting Shin. They just leaped at each other. Alright, so, uh, before, Abra only had teleports, but now Kadabra's here, and Kadabra's very tough. Kadabra's got Confusion, uh, Disable, and Kinesis. Confusion, of course, very powerful psychic move, and no one's really great with psychic. Disable can do that, completely ruining <laughs> me in this fight. <laughs> there goes my advantage, thank you. And, uh, Kinesis will just decrease your accuracy, but you'll probably not see him use that. Thankfully, though, Confusion proct. And also, wasn't disabled long. Uh, I think Kadabra was the Pokemon that got Game Freak sued, right? I don't know. I try to remember who it was, but some psychic, like some famous psychic, I think Gary Geller, uh, sued Game Freak for using his likeness <laughs> because of Kadabra and Alakazam. Yeah, I look exactly like that. How dare you, Game Freak? <laughs> I know, like, <laughs> dude, this is the biggest cell phone I think I've ever seen. I am yellow and hold a spoon all the time. I'll have to, like, relook it up, but it was really wild because I read like a statement from him of saying like I, I just see myself when I look at this creature <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah Kadabra is actually really tough especially in gen 1 where psychics are just horrible also you can look in the puke bucket but don't do that because that's gross so yeah uh, in order to progress we want to rub the captain's back and now he feels better. Yay. And for helping him, he will give us cuts. Which is the HM we need to access the next gym. Until these were revealed to be discs, I like to think that cut was just a sword. Because here's a sword you can give to your Pokemon. We'll just cut down a tree. All of them are samurai now. So, uh, if you ever want to find that truck, uh, don't do what I just did. Basically, uh, the SSN is going to leave when we do, but if you save one of the trainers and lose a fight, I think you can actually just go right back to the Pokemon Center without this happening, because once the SSN leaves, you get booted out of this area, and then you can never come back. But yeah, uh, and you probably don't care that much about a single lava cookie, so make sure to take care of all the experience on the SSN that you want, because it is worth quite a bit of experience. You're going to want to uh, grind up there for a bit. Uh, the other way to uh, get to that um, island is to just trade for a Pokemon the Nose Cut, mm -hmm. and then just not go on the St. Anne. Yep. You can do that because we do have the badge that lets us use it out of battle. But that requires having friends who have, like, hindsight or something. But, we have been here for a while. Now that we're done with the SSN, next time on Fire M next time on Pokemon Fire Red, we move on to the next gym. <laughs> we fight Harden. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He's here to defend Kakuna. <laughs>